Hi, Joe here at Woolly Cottage. It's that time of the month again and I'm blending out my batty clubs for October and the theme this month is Merino. So I wanted to try and keep this month's blend really quite um, neutral and natural looking. So I've not dyed anything for this blend, um, but I am using some really lovely fibres in there. So what I'll be using is a lovely grey Merino. And then with that, I'll be adding it an 18 count micron merino. Really, really soft. Lovely, lovely, lovely wool. And then I've got a black merino. It was already pre-dyed. I've bought it like that. Merino glitz in red and in white, in granite and in black. Okay. So it's going to have that retro feel about it. I'll show you the end product in a minute. And then I've got a Grey Dave Mulberry Silk, which is um, called London Red. And it's got quite, it's got more of like a very hint of a rusty colour undertone with that red. So it's not a bright hol uh, berry red, as like holly and mistletoe type red. It's a more of a London brick red. And then I've got some lotus fibers which is really really lovely and soft it feels like silk and it spins up like silk but it is a plant fiber and then along with that i have got some black just a silk which isn't as shiny as the marie as a mulberry silk but it is just as lovely a completely different process for that one and then i've got some black diamond bamboo which has a lovely shine to it and it's got some weight to that as well so this is the end product i'll just show you and i'll give you a sneak peek Cast your mind back to those 80s wallpapers when we were all kids, though I never had wallpaper in my bedroom, I was brought up in the military, so we had powder blue bedrooms, baby pink bedrooms and magnolia houses, so we weren't allowed, so my friends all had their bedrooms all wallpapered and I remember these splashes of striped lines of red, black and grey on a white background when we were growing up as kids, I even think I might have had a duvet cover like that, so that's the end result, 150 grams, and with that... I've been working alongside Heather at Flame Knits, um, who is doing my commission for my stitch markers for my batty clubs from now all the way through to August next year. So if you'd like to have a, try, have a look at something that she does, then you're more than welcome to pop over onto my website and go and look on my plans and prices section on the menu, drop the box down, you'll find it. And there's many options there for my batty clubs. You can try a single month and between now and next August, there'll be one of these included, as well as sweet and tea. Um, so yeah, so flame nets. There we go. So if you go look flame nets up or Heather up on Instagram, you will find the link to her website where you can find all the other beads that she does. And this month, this says monochrome, and she's got little silver glittery bits inside the the beads. And she does these. She makes these herself, lamp work. So they're all done by hand. She doesn't buy them in and put them together. She makes these herself. So, and every month is a different th theme. So she get, I always send her a couple months in advance the colours that I'm going to be doing for the next few months so she can get them pre-ordered and ready for me um, or ordering the colours that she needs for doing mine. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to get on with and get this done now. I'm doing it in a slight palindrome sort of effect. So the base layers, two layers of natural grey goes in and then on the layer after that, I put in... Um, black on the outside gray next on both sides and then in the center i do the white natural and then i come along and embellish with those colors that i've just shown you then and the bamboo and the twist of silk on the top of those and then i card it down and then the next layer is another two layers of gray merino and i repeat the same process again but in the middle this time i want the black and then gray then white on the outside and then i embellish the rest of that as well um so that's what i'm going to be doing on this second layer as well, I also add in a little bit of extra embellishment fibres just to help carry that transition through. But I don't do that on the first one that I do, but you'll see me doing that now. So I'm just going to get on with this, uh, play some music. It will be speeded up a little bit. I might slow it down for the first bat and the second one I'll do even faster. And then I'll catch up with you at the end and tell you what I've got planned for next week. So enjoy.
So I'm just going to add on the embellishments on the top here. So literally just dashes because I want these fibres to go on three layers. So I can't go over the top. I've got quite a lot of this grey. So I'm just going to spread it from the centre out and then from the centre out. And then a bit of the black from the out and just touching the white. And then from the out, just touching the white. And then the red, I'm quite happy for that to go all over. But I just want a taste of it. I don't want it. I don't want loads of it. So I'm just going to take some of this mulberry silk and just gently glide that across the top. And a little bit of this lotus fly fibre along the top as well. And then some of this just of silk on the top and then card that. Then I want to add my next layers of grey merino. And one more. So I'm just going to open it up so it's the fibres are evenly distributed along. Give that another quick card before I add my embellishment. Okay, so I want to just add a little bit of white, some more of this London red, not too much though, so I need that for the top. Now I've still got the bamboo and the chisel silk left over, so I'm gonna save the bamboo from a top layer and I'm just going to use the rest of this just of silk now and just put all of that straight on there. Add in a bit of grey and a tiny bit of the white, dash of red and some of this black. And now it's time for me to add on the top layer once I've got carding. Right, so to help define the, the colours, I'll leave the black to last because I'm going to add in the grey first. Now the grey is always going to be in these sides here and I need the black to go along the middle. So what I'm going to do is add in the grey first and try and avoid at least an inch of this edge here so the, red, the white can sit on that side. And again, on the other side. Then I'm going to take my black because now I've done the grey on either side so I don't have to worry about that and this means that the black will now be more defined in the centre and I won't have any bleeding coming from the grey. Just split that small sample into two pieces and eventually that will go on and split this white, this natural merino and just let that just gently go on the side there and do the exact same thing again on the other side and then I've still got grey tones and now it's to add on the rest of my colours so because I've left this bamboo here I actually want it to just go on most of the middle and then use a little dash right over the white and the grey sections. There we go. And then I'm going to use the grey next. And I want the grey to sort of just paint over everything really. There we go. And then some of the red, get that on there now before it disappears. And that will help those colours just pop a little bit. The last of the black are the glitz, then the white, and I'm going to try and aim mainly for the middle on this white one now because there's lots of black on it. 
So volume wise, it's not as much. Volume wise, there's not really that much black on there in comparison to the white and the, uh, the grey, especially the grey one. But because it's such a bold colour, it really does stand out. So I'm just going to add this mulberry silk to that. And the last of the lotus fibre, so I'm just going to splay that out. There we go. And because it's merino, when you take it off your drum card, it's quite hard fibre to sort of take off in one big chunk. So I usually advise just take smaller sections off and just take your time because the fibres are so long and strong together that you really just want to take small sections of it because it, is, it can get quite tough once it's been carded on there. It, as, as I say, it's got the longer staple length. If it was a shorter fibre, you wouldn't have to worry, struggle so much and you could probably get it all off from just about one chunk. But that's that. And I'm going to grab that troll by its hair and roly-poly it down the drum carder all the way along. Just using your pinkies there just to hold the edges in place. Give it one more quick turnover because there's still some fibres left on my drum. And there we go. Doesn't that look amazing? Really, really pretty. There's so much sparkles in there. So I'm just going to fill out the sections that I've just torn, turn it over and just tease out these fibres on this bat. Just really gentle because it's such a fine whirl um, it will pull out. If you, if you tug too hard it will end up with really really thin weak spots on your whirl. So I'm just going to roll this up, put it to one side for a second well, so there you have it, on. but then there was a moment just as I was getting to that top layer and I was starting to put the embellishments on and I went, ah, oh. I totally forgot to put the colours on the grey layer underneath, but that's alright, I've actually made up six, eight of these <laughs> this morning, so one mistake's not going to kill me, but it still works out the exact same effect, at the end of the day the fibres are all the way through this blend and it does look stunning. It looks amazing. I'm really, really impressed with it. Sometimes just having striking tones can just put some wow factor in your spinning. And that, I mean, these would look amazing if you were to knit these up with mittens and hat and glove set and maybe get some, um, some black wool tops with red already in it or something like that. It would look gorgeous. Um, so yeah, that is this month's Batty Clubs. Um, they are available on the website. I am closing the um, orders for these um, now and the next instalment and the next listings will be up for next month. I haven't decided what I'm going with yet. I will sort that out next week. Um, probably Monday I'll send out the emails. And don't forget, if you subscribe to the website, there you do get an email. It comes out every month just as a reminder and I have for VIP subscribers a lifetime 10% discount code now instead of doing the 15% 10% once it just makes life so much easier and it's one standard code and you just enter that at checkout whenever you buy something and it's for any stock on the website whether it be um, art bats, rovings when I put them on there once in a blue moon um, it could be the felt in pods, it could be the fluff rescue parcels, it could be my crafters pennies. I am bringing out some, i um, going to start advertising some just standard knitting or project bags for you to order from the website as well and every one of them will be unique. So you can use them against anything on the website and it will be 10% off and you could, go on the, you could go on the website once, twice, three times in a month and order something and you can still use that 10% discount code at any time. So go over there, give them a subscribe, but just double check your spam box. If it doesn't fall into, I always send up emails around about the 24th, 25th of each month. 
If you don't see it then, have a look in your spam box and get it to redirect it into your inbox because some um, some uh, mailing systems sort of just automatically put it into the spam and it shouldn't be, it's not junk mail, it's you getting your notifications from me of any events that are upcoming. So that is the clubs for this month, I'm yet to decide on next month's theme, I have to have a think on that, but next week's videos is going to be about how I decide how I create my bats. Um, so I'm going to do some picture inspirations for next week. Now I've got these ones, so I've found these pictures and the, this one and this one are very similar tones. So I thought, well, really, I can dye up quite a few of these colours and have a route through my stash to see what I've got and then create something that looks completely unique from each other. I mean, this has got a little bit of like a, a seal grey in there, but the rest of it is generally the same. And it's amazing what you can do with the same coloured wools just by adding a slight definition to it and blend them in a different way that look nothing alike to each other. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, I'll probably film them on Monday and they will be up on the website by then anyway, but I'll release that video next week. Um, but that's what I'm going to go with. And this colourway here will be on the website as well, which is very similar to this. So I might do all three of them. I haven't made up my mind. And I'll be explaining how I come up with my ideas just by inspired by a picture. So that's next week's um, videos. Should be up. Um, either the beginning of the week I'll put them up there depending on my schedule and I've got loads to get sorted out over the next week and a half um, in regards to Christmas Advents because they all start getting posted out in the next two weeks or well, in the next two weeks um, yeah so that's about it any questions or queries drop a comment below my batty clubs are £21.50 but if you go onto the website you can either buy a six months contract um, subscription but you get a free order with that so you're really only paying for five months if you pay for a year subscription you get 12 bats but you're only paying for 10 of them so they're on the website on the plans and pricing box in the drop box um, but you alternatively just buy a month subscription if you've got a little bit of pocket money but you, as in like your birthday money you want to treat yourself to something my blends for my bat clubs are generally unique of their own kind I don't repeat them for the shop you may now and again I'll come across the same color theories but these blends are all unique in their own way and they're only designed for bite clubs so that you can't get them anywhere else um, but yeah if you please hit that like button below there's a little thumbs up there's a thumbs up and a thumbs down hit that one and it helps other people find me on the web on the YouTube platform um, and subscribe and I do my chats every Saturday afternoon, round about lunchtime if you want to come over and join me. At the moment, unfortunately, after the worldwide crash with Instagram and Facebook, I'm unable to save my live chats on my phone at the moment until they get that sorted out. It is a problem that's happened since then. Um, and I've not been able to upload my live chats onto my YouTube channel. But you can access them on my Instagram account if you want to catch up with what I've been up to. So you take care of yourselves and I'll see you, if not Saturday, next week.